Good morning, I'm Kate Seeley, Vice President for Arts and Culture at MEI, and I wanna welcome you to today's panel. We're looking forward to a great conversation with two of the Paris-based artists in MEI's current show in this moonless black night, Syrian art after the uprising. The exhibit marks the 10th anniversary of the Syrian revolution and features the work of 14 leading Syrian contemporary artists reflecting on the past decade of trauma and displacement. Now the exhibit is open to the public for timed appointments and will be up until July 16th. We're open Mondays through Fridays from 10 to 5 p.m., closed briefly for lunch, and you can make an appointment on our website. Now the show can also be viewed online at mei.edu, but the power of the show is in seeing the works in person in the gallery. And the show got a beautiful review in the Washington Post recently. Uh, and a recent visitor, a docent from the Hirshhorn Museum just yesterday called it a gem of an exhibit. So please, please don't miss it. Now today's panel organization, uh, today's panel is organized in collaboration with the cultural services of the French embassy here in Washington as part of their museum series. And we're delighted to be partnering with them and look forward to doing more together. So thanks so much to Mr. Denis Canel, the cultural attache at the French embassy and his team for helping make this program possible. We'll be hosting another panel featuring the Berlin-based artists in June, as well as screening several Syrian films in partnership with the Syrian-run production company, Bideat for Audiovisual Arts. So keep a lookout for these events and thanks so much to the Violet Jabara Foundation for their support of the exhibit. Now, thanks also to our artists today, Badi Dalul and Naram for you know, taking time out of your very busy schedules. We love your work. Thank you so much for being with us and for participating in this exhibition. And thanks also to our moderator, Vanessa Badre. Very briefly, this is MEI's, um, the MEI Art Gallery's sixth exhibit to date. We opened a little more than a year and a half ago in the fall of 2019 and then COVID hit. Uh, although we have been programming uh, throughout and our gallery has been open since October, but we were set up as a space inside the Middle East Institute to showcase artists from the region and to serve as a platform for dialogue and exchange in Washington and uh, nationally. So if you aren't familiar with MEI or our past exhibits and many, many panels and cultural events, please check us out at mei.edu on the arts and culture page. And just a few housekeeping notes for our audience before I hand it over to Mr. Cannell. To submit your questions, please use uh, Zoom's Q&A feature, which you can find on your Zoom screens. For those calling in by phone or watching our panel on the live stream, you can ask a question by emailing events at mei.edu. And if you have any technical issues, please email the same address, events at mei.edu. Now over to you, Mr. Cannell. Thank you all so much again. And good morning. Thanks a lot, Kate, uh, for showing this really powerful and uh, moving exhibit at the Middle East Institute and for co-hosting with us this uh, really promising discussion with uh, two Paris-based leading Syrian contemporary artists, uh, Badi Dalul and uh, Naham Udaifa. So th this event, as you said, is part of our uh, museum series. That's a new program that we launched last month and that uh, proposes dialogues around art and artists uh, from a French perspective, part French perspective. Uh, so this museum series is moderated by Vanessa Badre, uh, whom I am really happy to introduce. Vanessa is uh, currently an American University faculty fellow. Uh, she is a lawyer, art historian, and keynote speaker, specializing in observing and anal analyzing uh, works of art to explore broader social and economic themes and concepts. Uh, you can discover her activity, including lectures and seminars on her website, uh, www.vanessabadre.com. So the next museum series will take place uh, on the second half of May and will be dedicated to the Duchamp collections uh, at the Irshan uh, Museum. So I hope you will uh, join us for this uh, uh, promising discussion too. And beyond the museum series, the Maison Française also offers uh, other online events for the moment and I hope on-site events uh, in the near future, uh, especially films and talks uh, that you can discover on our website. And I would like to mention one discussion about uh, sustainable agriculture tomorrow uh, at noon uh, for the uh, Earth Day. So we hope to see you very soon at Maison Française and we are re very happy uh, to be part of this, uh, of this program. Uh, stay safe and healthy and uh, we hope to see you soon. Now over to Vanessa. 
Hello, hello everybody. Well, we are all very, very happy to be with you today and very honored to meet um, Naham and, and Badi, uh, Naham Odaifa and Badi Dalul. Um, so it's, it's a great honor to introduce you. So I'm going to say a few words, uh, uh, so many things to say about both of you. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's a very difficult choice to find the right, the right words. Um, as I'm French, you know, and I'm very faithful to French tradition, I will begin by uh, Naham Odaifa, the ladies first, of course. Uh, so Naham, you are born in, uh, in Syria. Uh, you graduated from the Department of Painting of the Faculty of Iron Arts in Damascus, um, at Damascus University. And you left Syria in 2005 to pursue your studies and you received a PhD uh, in uh, uh, contemporary art history at uh, La Sorbonne, which is uh, the best uh, French university. Uh, so congratulations for, for you. Um, you held many exhibitions and performances and uh, you combine music, dance, poetry, calligraphy. So a very broad spectrum of, uh, of activities. Um, you explore the human condition through uh, the representation of body and uh, particularly the female body. And uh, um, most of your paintings, and I was very fortunate to go to the MEI and to see uh, your, your masterpiece. Uh, so you are very interested in female body, um, the female body which is uh, intentionally headless and faceless. Now, gentlemen, uh, the gentleman from Japan, uh, Mr. Badi Dalul, um, you know, for French people, it's very interesting that you are in a residence, residency in, in Japan because um, for us French people, we, are, we all know about the Villa Medici in Rome and, uh, and when we think about residency abroad um, in the French cultural spectrum, we always thought about Rome and Villa Medici. So, so uh, the, the, the Villa uh, Kuyo, Kuyo Yama, um, uh, which is one of the a famous French residency uh, for uh, fellows that uh, do some research in art and, and creativity. Um, it's really uh, it's really interesting for us to to think that you are really a citizen of the world. You know, uh, uh, from Syrian roots, uh, brought up in Paris, and now um, and now in Japan. So very very interesting for for us to measure the worldwide dimension of uh, of art. Uh, you come from a family of artists, so we might say it's in your blood. Uh, you graduated from the École Nationale des Beaux-Arts in Paris, which is, uh, well, the, the top, top of the top, um, with honors from the jury, says your bio. And uh, you, know, you are interested in, in um, society, politics, economic, uh, historic, uh, historical dimension. Uh, so you create uh, a narrative uh, bringing together imagination and real world to try to understand what happened in your uh, homeland in, in, in Syria. And now um, I have the honor to introduce Lynn, Lynn Snage. Um, uh, thank you, Lynn, to welcome us uh, today. Um, and uh, you are the director of the Art and Culture Center at the Middle East Institute in Washington, DC. And it is with Lynn that I visited the exhibition. So I was uh, very fortunate and very happy because Lynn was able to give me all the explanations and uh, the understanding of your, <coughs> of your works. Um, so Lynn had uh, multiple activities as she was deputy director uh, Lebanon and Regional Projects Manager for Arts and Culture for the Middle East at the British Council, uh, operating out of Beirut. Um, and she has extensive experience in strategy and planning, as well as project management. Uh, so, Lynn, now the floor is yours, because, uh, of course, we are all eager to, to visit uh, this exhibition before talking to uh, Badi and uh, Naham. Uh, so could you could you tell us about some some works of the exhibition? Of course. 
Uh, it is such a pleasure to be with everyone today on this panel and to be speaking about this very special exhibition, I have to say. Uh, the exhibition is entitled In This Moonless Black Night, Syrian Art After the Uprising. And the, the show brings together the works of 14 leading contemporary Syrian artists uh, who are reflecting on the past decade of hope, trauma, and pain that the Syrian people have experienced and continue to experience. Uh, the exhibition as a whole marks the 10th anniversary of the uprising, of the start of the uprising, and the artists that are in the show are all outside of Syria. Some of them are in Germany, some of them are in the US, some of them are in Lebanon as in, and in France as, as we are in their company uh, today. The works in the show span uh, painting, multimedia, photography, video, and installation, and they reflect on the loss, the war, and the impact of the conflict on the country and its people. But they do it with subtlety and with a lot of grace and humanity. And I think the show offers a very different entry point and a very different perspective to how wars um, are perhaps depicted, uh, presented, and experienced. And they have this reflective and, and, and very beautiful um, aspect um, to them. There are 27 works in the show, and I'd love to highlight a few for our audience uh, so they, they can get a flavor on, on some of the works. And I'm gonna ask my colleague to uh, put up perhaps the first uh, uh, artwork that I would like to speak about briefly. So the show opens with two um, of those, you know, a, a series of those photographs, you're seeing one of them. This is by artist Usama Esid, um, and uh, Usama is a, um, a photographer, he's a portrait photographer, the work that you're seeing is entitled Fatima and is a photo he took during a visit to a refugee camp in Turkey in 2013. Uh, Usama, I think, was um, taken aback by uh, the welcome that he had received in the camp by the children. Uh, you, this is almost, this can be a, a school portrait, a school photo, and you see Fatima even has, is holding flower and has offerings, this is so, uh, um, you know, this humanizes this whole topic uh, at the time of, of refugee and displacement, but you can see also the almost terrified look uh, in, and anxious, anxious look in Fatima's eyes. So the, the, the show opens with uh, Fatima and another uh, portrait of, of his series uh, entitled Walid. The next uh, piece I would like to highlight and, and speak about, uh, the two pieces actually that we're seeing are by um, artist Aza Abu uh, Rebeah. Aza is a multimedia artist and a printmaker and her etchings that you see two of them here tell the story of human survival. Aza is an artist and an activist and she was actually jailed in Damascus in 2015. <laughs> And those works are part of a uh, the Women in Prison series that she had made from her memory of that time. So the first one on your left is, you know, we were in, in one three meter square room, we were 15 women. And then the one uh, that you see on the right of your screen, the bed and the white pillow became my new home. Uh, she has other works in the show, and I have to say all of them, you know, the, the, the works we are sharing on the screen do not uh, do justice to seeing the work in person. The next uh, slide uh, is the next, uh, this, this work is by artist Muhammad Hafiz. Mohammed is an artist, but also an architect. He's a trained architect. And you can see that a little bit in the work itself. So this work is from a series called Baggage Series. Um, those are hauntingly beautiful. They're small dioramas of destroyed homes and intimate places of people that he puts on in the suitcases. Of course, this is a symbolic object for anybody who is leaving 
uh, a home, uh, you take what you can with you. And inside those suitcases, when you open them, you have, you know, you go into the intimate uh, lives and places of people that they had to abandon. Uh, they, he names his pieces after real people who he has interviewed. Uh, this piece is called Ayman and Rina. And Ayman and Rina are actually two people that he had interviewed that had to flee as, uh, you know, leave breakfast on the table and leave their home, uh, thinking that they will come back in a couple of days. And it's been nine years. Um, I want to highlight an iconic piece as well in the show that we have. This is by Tamam Azam. It's called Freedom Graffiti. Uh, uh, Tamam Azam is a painter and a collage artist. He's known for those photo montage, for those juxtapositions of famous works. This is of course the kiss by Clint uh, that he juxtaposes over a, uh, a destroyed building. Uh, this went viral uh, at the beginning of, uh, in, in 2013, shortly after, and it almost became a visual representation of uh, the war and of the resilience of people, of, 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 uh, of beauty and, and, and death, if, if you want it. Uh, the last piece that I would like to highlight is by Oruba Dieb. Oruba is an artist uh, in Paris. She left Syria during the war and still very much carries this uh, scar with her. Uh, her work, I find, is very, very serene and graceful in the face of the horror uh, and the pain that she is actually trying to communicate in her work. So this is a uh, almost uh, an endless uh, journey of people who are walking, but it's almost as if their journey never ends and they don't know where they're walking to. You know, you don't see their faces, but you see their body posture and it's almost burdened by this, this pain of, of uh, leaving. So the show is so diverse and so beautiful. It almost trans, you know, it does transcend Syria in a, in the way that it also deals about, you know, global issues around displacement, the human cost of of war, and the humanity, and how we see the other. And it's all through the personal experiences of of the artists themselves. Thank you, Lynn. Well, very interesting. I think everybody is dying to go and, and see the, the works of art. Um, the beauty of uh, contemporary art is that we can ask questions to the artists who are alive with us um, and sharing the same world and, and reality as, as us. So, so it's really, uh, it's really good for us to, to be with you today. And uh, maybe, Buddy, um, I'd like to, to ask you the first, uh, the first question. Uh, could, you, could you explain us um, some of your works? Um, because it gives a lot of food for thought, uh, but it requires also some uh, explanations. When I saw them, and I don't know if we will be able to see some images, but when I saw them, I thought about board games. Uh, and I was wondering um, the, the theme you were dealing with. And uh, for French people, you know, there is a famous game that children play with, which is called Le Nain Jaune, the, 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 the yellow dwarf. Uh, but I don't know if it's there, there is a, another translation. But anyway, the, the board game looks like these boxes. And, and uh, we observed also a little miniature and medallions that uh, reminds us of uh, illuminations and, and medieval manuscript. So I'm sure you have a lot to share with us to give, uh, to shed light on your, on your work. Yes, good morning. Uh, thank you for your question, dear. Uh, first, uh, I would like to thank uh, the Middle East Institute and uh, the French Embassy and uh, all who made this uh, talk possible. Uh, indeed, um, the, to answer your question, uh, my work is, is uh, yes, about an old board game. Uh, I chose deliberately uh, the path of this old board game in order to illustrate a part of our life. Uh, life, as I see it, 
is really not in our hands. Destiny is not in our hands. Uh, things that are bigger than our will are always uh, modifying the way the things we have planned usually and uh, exhibited in this uh, exhibition uh, among uh, this beautiful group of artists. Um, the message here is globally that uh, our country, the country of our parents is not is not something that we can uh, decide on. It is something we are part of, but uh, uh, we see it s through screens. Uh, we hear it through telephone. And uh, this is unfortunately uh, the way we, we deal uh, with migration, the way we deal uh, with, uh, with distance and uh, with homeland. In, uh, in my opinion, yes. And uh, how these, these works are related with other works or other series that, that, you, that you did in, in the past? Are, are you specialized in, the, in board games, <laughs> um, to speak mm. roughly, or mm. what, what is your other kind of works? Well, the notion of game and the, the randomness of how um, the events could take place or not is uh, reminds me and in my practice is something part of the way history is written so far. Uh, of course, history is very precise, but is, it is also a great playwright, in my opinion, uh, for the worst and for the best. And uh, sometimes in my work, we will see card games. Sometimes we will see board games such as this one, but uh, sometimes only reference to the randomness of, uh, of events and the randomness of how history is written overall. Thank you. And when I look at the, at all the medallion, uh, how how do you you do build the, the narrative? Do you read it from top to bottom or from left to right? Every medallion is. I suppose that every medallion. I observe them very carefully with all the characters. So every medallion is telling is telling a story. I suppose. This is correct. Uh, in fact, uh, there is no particular order uh, in these two works to read uh, the images, the different images. Uh, it could be in any order and it would always stay the, say the same thing, which is how our life is not in our hands. <laughs> so in the first one, in the King of System one, you see different people trying to uh, uh, get their life in hands, uh, try to uh, have control or some kind of control, but so far they cannot. They're always arguing at work, arguing with their family, uh, burning garbages, uh, arguing when driving uh, or when uh, going to buy food. Uh, and in the other one, the king of the system three, uh, it is more uh, it is another story, but uh, it is a story of how people migrate and uh, sometimes you do not choose your destination and you arrive in places and, and it becomes your home. And always, well, the, the, the central part of it is, is the time, the, the watch that you have. Uh, and it, it still continues. Thank you, thank you, Badi. Uh, now, Naham, I, I would be very happy to, to ask you some questions as well. Uh, well, your, your masterpiece in the exhibition is uh, named Chemise de Nuit, Night Gown. Um, so could you, could you tell us, 
could you could you tell us about this this work of art? It's a triptych, so it's very interesting, a very uh, traditional structure uh, from the Middle Age. So so, uh, and I'm sure you didn't choose it by by luck. It it was uh, it was something that you you wanted to make. So um, could you could you explain this this work of art? Uh, thank you very much. I'm, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be in this program and this uh, and in this uh, exposition. Uh, thank you for uh, for uh, for you to receiving me. So, a uh, night gown is like uh, other uh, theme in uh, of my artwork. It grows uh, through a continual reflection over many years. Uh, time doesn't follow a linear structure in uh, my world. Uh, this theme began to appear in my painting uh, with the memory of uh, a nightgown given uh, of my grandmother uh, to me. Before I uh, move, uh, a few months before I moved to France, uh, it was in August uh, 2005. Uh, but uh, 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 by this gift, a female uh, temporality uh, was transmitted. I never slept uh, with it. Uh, every time I uh, dress it, I began to draw myself and to draw uh, this uh, nightgown in my journal uh, since uh, 2009. The first uh, the canvas in this subject uh, date to uh, from uh, 2012. Uh, only this painting is uh, my height uh, is of my height and dimension, but it's uh, headless and uh, faceless. So, what you show in the exhibition uh, is the continuity uh, of this theme in my artwork. This is dish uh, Triptych, uh, who was uh, I was made uh, in the last year, uh, with other paintings uh, about this light motif that I never uh, show uh, yet uh, uh, in exposition. Uh, the triptych uh, goes back to the nature and to the body landscape uh, and to the woman body. I would like to bring uh, your attention, please, uh, to the middle piece uh, of uh, this artwork. You can see the nightgown is like the sea. Uh, and at the same time, the hand in the foreground give erotic dimension. The clothes remind us uh, as uh, the uterus. Nightgown is linked to the intimacy. Uh, it cannot be seen or observed except by a very close person. It reflects the human uh, universal conditions and a question rose by it, uh, carrying a social or anthropological dimension. This fabric uh, carries a story of keeping, of remembering, or to be a fetch ob uh, object. It permits the, the invisible to be invisible and evoke, uh, evoke the rapid desire, rapid skin, uh, that rapid is got the exalt the body, make it animals. Uh, the team highlight also the feminine domestic life. Uh, when formerly once was often work it's banking and weaving, clothing manufacturer for her family. Thank you, thank you, Naham. Uh, when I uh, visited the expedition with Lynn, I observed um, that you used uh, papier d'arche, so arch paper, which is very uh, French uh, fabrication of, of paper. Uh, and I, I, I saw that um, the damp uh, paper has uh, crinkled. Uh, and uh, I was uh, wondering if it was part of your work, you know, to show uh, with the paper that has crinkled because it has been impregnated with water because it's watercolor. 
um, well, maybe you might use watercolor if there is mixed technique. And I was wondering if you wanted to show the vulnerability and the fragility of a female body with this uh, paper, this crinkled uh, paper. Uh, with the arch paper, um, y yes, maybe uh, with uh, the. Um, I often uh, work it uh, with um, a mixed media uh, and the arch paper, especially. Uh, it's um, we can make a lot of things. Yeah, don't uh, so. Uh... When you talk about mixed techniques, so when I looked at the painting, uh, I thought it was watercolor. Yeah. What is the other technique? Not, not, not only watercolor here. Um, I like um, in, uh, in my painting, um, uh, come on, dear. Uh, painting from uh, from uh, raw material is necessary for me. Yes, and the knowledge of the alchemy of the trade is uh, basic in my art. Uh, so uh, when I made this piece and all my painting, uh, oftenly I uh, uh, use the pigment. Uh, yeah, pigments and uh, for for example, metal cellulose, and I uh, research in the in the very uh, uh, ancient uh, the, uh, the, yes. yeah uh, for making uh, the the colors. Very very interesting. And could you tell us uh, some words about the fragmentation of the body? Why the body is so much fragmented? Um, well, spontaneously, spontaneously, I thought that it was because you wanted to show the fragility of, of human being, or is there some another message that you want to deliver? <laughs> this is uh, so. Uh, this is a little bit. Uh, uh, when I was, uh, ah, it's, a, it's a little bit, uh, excuse me. Uh, gener and generally, I don't uh, show the face. Yes. And this, uh, and this thing is uh, related with um, uh, with the thoughts uh, in my PhD. Uh, and uh, to, to um, uh, with the time, I um, it was uh, uh, it. Would you like to say it in French? Yeah, maybe it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's more uh, it's yeah yeah. Uh, I'm sorry because. Um, Donc en fait, la, la, la prog... c'est quelque chose en fait qui est lié avec, euh, il y a dix ans, euh, euh, quand j'étais en train de travailler sur la question de visage, et en fait, euh, j'avais, euh, et j'ai travaillé beaucoup en fait avec la danse, et mm. euh, petit à petit, en fait, je suis arrivée à, à, à un autre euh, esthétique de, de corps. Oh, Et... Yes, I'm going to translate that. In fact, uh, Nahab was very interested in the representation of dancer, dance. And so uh, through the, the motion of the bodies, Nahab discovered another way to see the body. So that leads that led us to this idea of, of fragmentation, another way, another vantage point to, to, to look at the body um, of, of dancers. So thank you, Nara. Now I would like to, to ask uh, uh, Badi about, um, and Naham as well later on, about exile. Uh, because, well, it's, it's very interesting. We, we, we talk about exile, but uh, Badi, you're born in France. 
So where, where do you belong to? Uh, well, you can answer to me that you are a citizen of the world, but uh, I will not be satisfied with this answer. So uh, we, we are all very interested in, in this the fact that you are born in France, here in France, and that you are so linked and connected and too faithful, so faithful to your homeland. Yes, thank you for your question. Indeed, uh, it is a difficult question. Uh, of course, uh, I will tell you that I am both. But in fact, I am also non. <laughs> so uh, it is, well, we can turn it philosophically, especially now as I am talking from, from Japan, it makes it even more complicated. I came here in order to understand more what was happening in where I grew up, Paris, and also to understand more the travel of my parents in the 80s, the travel they've made for their studies at the time to Paris and of which I am the product. The film I am doing in Japan is about Syrian people who came to Japan exactly for the same reason sometimes for their studies and who stayed and considered Japan their home. Of course, the two countries are different and the way they accept foreigners are also different. But it is this difference that sometimes makes you realize uh, what the process more clearly, I, in fact, I think. Did I answer your question? Yeah, how would you describe your relationship with Syria? It, it's because, in fact, it's a place, maybe I'm wrong, but from one, what I read, you've never been to Syria or do you know the country? How, how often did you go uh, with war? It might have been difficult. So, yes. so is it a sort of uh, imagination country? In fact, uh, it is true that uh, my situation is more fortunate uh, than I think uh, some artists uh, who left Syria uh, during these last 10 years. I grew up in France, my parents are Syrians. So uh, it is my heritage and my language, I mean, one of my languages, uh, that is the link to this country. I have visited it uh, often during my childhood. In fact, uh, I get once a year till uh, the events started in 2011 and then uh, of course it became more and more difficult and it's been now 10 years uh, unfortunately and uh, with 10 years you have the time to see it only through distance to imagine it uh, and uh, to more and more it becomes it becomes abstract, of course, uh, as you cannot touch it, as you cannot uh, uh, smell it uh, firsthand. Uh, of course. Yes, and if we if we choose the word exile, what do you do? Is it relevant for you? Do you consider no. you in exile or not? I would answer. No. What 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 do you think? Of course not. I, 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 you belong where where you are. Do you feel that you belong uh, to France or? Uh, hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I, yes. I was wondering what was your relationship with with exile. Do you consider yes. you an exile or not? Uh, yes. No. No. Uh, I, I I am fortunate to to not consider it uh, as an exile. Uh, it is the country of my parents, first of all, uh, which is a difference, I guess, with the uh, other artists that are exhibited in this uh, exhibition. Thank you, Vadim. Uh, Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Naham, Naham, of course, uh, you are in a situation that is different from uh, Badi because you are born in Syria and you arrived in, in France in 2005. Um, uh, you, you studied there. So wh what is your relationship with, with France, with the world, and, and with the concept of uh, 
well, concepts not the right word, but the idea, the reality of exile. Uh, so when um, when the conflict um, the conflict began uh, in Syria ten years ago, I was so troubled, and uh, that was uh, so difficult for me to show or uh, my painting or the con to continue normally uh, to go on living. Uh, and I, I uh, avoid to presenting uh, in a direct way. Uh, uh, in um, and in the circumstances uh, in which artists can uh, can be Jews, uh, uh, their art in exile are completely different from their country, and it's not easy. Uh, they depend uh, in market and uh, in public taste. Uh, uh, they need the people who support them, especially directors, publishers, galleries, collectors, uh, and institutions who can uh, distribute their work. Um, if artists are unable to find a way into a culture scene uh, and gaining access to the art business in their receiving country, that can lead them to assess their previous artistic activities uh, completely. Many aspects uh, play a role here, which don't necessarily have uh, anything uh, to do with artistic uh, quality. I uh, respond to you in general about exile and uh, about art. Uh, for me, uh, about uh, the exile, as I come in uh, two, two, uh, 2005, and uh, it's, it's really, uh, uh, I, uh, it's voluntary, I, I come here, and uh, I was a need to, to travel, to, to see another culture, to, uh, it's, it's a little, it's, it's different from, uh, from a Syrian person who come during the events. I so see. I don't know if I uh, I uh, respond to you <laughs> completely. But did you have the feeling a, a sort of um, guilt, maybe, to have abandoned your your country, or on or, or not? Uh, no, not not really, uh, because. Uh, uh, when the events uh, was uh, uh, was began. I, I have a lot of guilty sensation about to, to show my painting, but not, uh, and for example, more recently, I go back to Syria. After uh, the last year, uh, I, I was in France in 2005, and, uh, uh, and uh, from 2009 until this year, it's meaning uh, there's two months ago, I go back and I see uh, all the things and th that was very necessarily uh, for me to go and to see uh, the family, to see, uh, to see all the things, the, uh, the, uh, the homeland and... Uh, uh. Syria and, and daily life in Syria continue to inspire your, your work in France. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, but not in uh, a direct way. Uh, it's meaning uh, I uh, always um, uh, my team. It's not uh, it 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 um, uh, It comes from the intimate uh, memory and not uh, from the situation Syrian from the crisis. It's, it's really I I I never. Uh, worked um, about uh, uh, about the war uh, uh, until now. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, 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 I uh, I, tr I tried to take some distance. I see, I see. And we were wondering as well if you had uh, a community of uh, Syrian artists. So if you if you know each other, if you are spread all over the world, or if there is a French uh, a French community of Syrian artists, how do you communicate? Do you help each other? Is there an emulation? You know, where 
when, when we talk about French artists of the 19th century or beginning of the 20th century, you know, uh, uh, Braque and Picasso or Dorin and Matisse, and they, they work together observing the same scene and painting the same scene. Um, uh, so it's, uh, even the impression it is the same. So do you have this kind of, of relationship and community working together, creating emulation? Uh, I want to begin uh, about the France because it's a formidable uh, area. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. This is a cosmopolitan uh, landscape. Okay, uh, here I meet people from all uh, over all the world. So this is the first thing, and I have contact uh, with uh, uh, special, especially uh, 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 when I were with my study during my study, and with the artists uh, and uh, the. Uh, uh, of course, there have uh, many of artists uh, here, and uh, we know uh, each other. And finally, it's uh, the um, the circle artistic is uh, not very big, and uh, uh, and the artistic in uh, uh, in inside of Syria and outside of Syria, we know each other. Here in France, there's some uh, collective of artists. Uh, for example, uh, Caravan, uh, Caravan Culturel Syrien or Porte Ouverte sur l'Art Syrien. And they make, uh, make a lot of events here. And mm -hmm. not only in France, but, but also in Europe, uh, they're, uh, they're making um, some events. Thank you. And, and you, Badi, are you connected with the French, uh, well, the, the Syrian community in France or, or, abro or abroad? Is there a strong, for instance, I was wondering, uh, I saw the works of all the artists who participate in this exhibition. I, uh, and I was wondering, do you know for, do you know each other, for instance, have you ever met? Uh, what is your relationship between all of you? Well, uh, yes, of course, uh, some uh, names are uh, famous and uh, there are some artists that I know, for instance, Naram, uh, well, uh, and uh, yes, uh, we, as uh, Naram mentioned, there are uh, different uh, circles of artists. Uh, I, gradu I graduated from Boza of Paris and uh, well, uh, I, I met the people of uh, my uh, promotion, but not only, uh, of course, the people who graduated from the school, but there are also uh, the, the the Syrian artists uh, the, that you mentioned in the in the collectives uh, as well. I'm taking part of um, in an exhibition in Paris at the Cité des Arts these days, uh, which is uh, suggested by uh, uh, the collective Porte Ouverte sur l'Art, which I invite you to go and see at least online, uh, which is beautiful and created by Nora Philippe. Uh, and uh, there are many Syrian artists in this exhibition, but not only. Uh, so yes, uh, but not only. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And uh, we were wondering also, because you know, we are French, this is the Maison Francaise, uh, we, um, we were curious to know your feelings about France uh, and art and, uh, well, obviously, uh, France is a generous uh, mécène and sponsor because you are invited at the, at the, in residence at the, uh, in Japan. Uh, so do you, do you think that, uh, well, I don't want to force you, to oblige you to say that you are grateful to France, of course not, but uh, did you feel you had uh, a, a good context, a good environment to thrive and to, and to blossom uh, thanks to uh, 
all the, the institutions and the, and the, the teaching of, of, of uh, given by France. For you, you, Badi, you are born in France, but especially for Naham, who came uh, not in exile, as I understood, uh, but who came specially to France. And you, she could have, you could have chosen all of the places in, in, in the world, uh, Naham, but you chose to come to France. So what are your feelings about that? for me so both of you both of you yeah yeah, yeah. i i am i am an artist uh, come from syria okay but i am also citizen of the world and uh, recently i materialized french citizen so uh, i have uh, uh, paris and european cities present an extraordinary uh, cultural uh, richness uh, allow meeting and sharing uh, here in France, uh, I uh, I showed my work uh, from the first year of uh, my arrival uh, arrival in France. Uh, uh, it was a, a personal show uh, that took place in Lyon in uh, 2006, and then arrived in Paris. Uh, and between study and paintings, I organized several uh, exposition and performance and culture. Uh, even so, uh, uh, and uh, especially when I was in City International de Paris, uh, uh, and uh, here uh, uh, I uh, uh, I make a lot of events, and uh, I was uh, elected as uh, a president of uh, a residence committee. See, I, I only uh, uh, speak about this uh, to to show uh, this is before the. Uh, the, the events uh, in Syria. And uh, during uh, my PhD at considering with the events in Syria, um, uh, I put uh, myself a little bit away uh, from the artistic scene by devo uh, devoting myself to research. Uh, so, Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And Badi, what could you tell us? Well, it is an amazing opportunity. Of course, I'm grateful. Uh, as I graduated from the Beaux Arts of Paris, and uh, it was a very inspiring environment. Artists from uh, all over the world coming to 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 Paris uh, in order to blossom. But of course, it is also a very competitive environment. And if you intend to live out of your art, uh, you also need to be up to the, to the stick and uh, continue to work hard on it. So yes, uh, it is amazing. We, we can apply to grants uh, with serious projects. Uh, we can find uh, uh, the level also of the, of the discussions. I must say the level of discussions in Paris is very high most of the time. Uh, we can go very deep uh, with the people of our field, but also the people outside our field. Uh, if I must talk, if if I'm talking in a in a general level, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so this is is uh, unique, and uh, being a, a resident of the Villa Kujoyama, I can say it uh, from a very personal point of view that. Uh, the conditions of travel of work here are uh, extraordinary, uh, and the team of the villa is amazing. The team of the Institut Français uh, makes a great work in uh, uh, how do we say diffusion of the work. Credit uh, or information? I don't know. A, 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 a diffusion is um, uh, a, a, uh, advertising, advertising, and communication, and and uh, and introducing our works to 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 great professionals here. So we really feel. Uh, and you you're going to have a uh, an exhibition in Hiroshima uh, soon. Yes. Could, it, could you tell us a little bit of the work you are going to present there at Hiroshima? Yes, uh, with pleasure. It, it, so uh, it is not the first time uh, I have exhibited. Uh, at Hiroshima Art Document, uh, curated by uh, Miss Yukiko Ito, uh, who has been doing uh, this uh, art exhibition for uh, 20 years, exhibiting uh, major 
French, Japanese, and uh, foreign artists uh, at this uh, event. And uh, usually it is in collaboration with the Memorial Museum of Hiroshima, but uh, not uh, every year. And this time uh, I was able and grateful to produce uh, a part of my work that was shown at the Palais Tokyo last year, uh, which are the drawings inside the matchboxes that perhaps you have seen uh, uh, in the press release. Uh, and uh, so I have exhibited uh, a good number of them uh, in this traditional old house. Thank you. Uh, uh, Lee, welcome. we are all eager to have your comments. And please, could you, could you tell us a few words? Um, absolutely, uh, Vanessa. I've been listening to the, you know, the, the, the fantastic uh, uh, things that uh, Naram and Badi shared about, you know, their, their opportunities, their journeys, their work. And I, I have to say that this is, you know, this is clearly a, it reaffirms the importance of um, artistic exchange, right? Whether it comes voluntarily or as a result of a lot of Syrian artists having to leave their country. This has definitely, I mean, for the worst reasons, of course, but this has actually uh, resulted in an explosion of Syrian contemporary art outside. And what the work that we have seen, which some of it is represented in the exhibition, is um, uh, another narrative about Syria and that transcends Syria, that those young artists are not only um, producing outside about Syria, but in the societies where they are, such as Naram and Badi, their work also helps start those important conversations in the society where they are, right? Where they choose to go or where they are forced to find themselves in. And their work helps us as a society to move forward on issues of migration, issues of exchange, issues of diversity, and they actually create those pluralities. I mean, Badi is on this fantastic, you know, long art residencies to reflect and to produce. And his work is going to help, um, you know, further those, those, this thinking. So this not only reaffirms the importance of this mobility, you know, that we need, this exchange that we need, to happen, but also the arts being a fantastic medium uh, to actually help us reflect on those things and draw us back to the important unifying state of us all being human, right? Of all of us having to reflect together on those things so that we can all move forward. Um, on, on the feelings of exile, just one word on the feeling of, of, of your questions around exile, around identity broadly, I think those feelings of identity manifest themselves more when we leave the homeland, whether voluntarily or not, we, come, we become, I think, more aware of uh, who we are and where we are coming from. Uh, and we start reflecting on those things. We don't necessarily reflect on them as much when we are in our original sort of countries within our communities. But when you have to find your voice and your place in uh, a new country, suddenly they emerge more strongly and you become much more sensitive about how you are represented and the language in which you are characterized. And those are actually things that are important and layered over if you are living in a crisis and you're labeled in a in a certain way that that is uh even you know that exasperates your process Lean, i'm very sorry because it is the end of our meeting uh thank you so much all of you thank you kate thank you buddy uh, good night thank you naham i hope we will meet in person one day well i'm looking forward to if you are back to from Japan to Paris and you are you're still in Paris, Naham. Um, thank you very much. It was absolutely wonderful, very interesting. Kate, if you could uh, tell us a word of uh, goodbye and conclusion. 
sure. Thank you. thank you, Vanessa, for your wonderful moderating. Thanks, Lynn, for your insights. And thank you so much, Badi from Japan and Narab from Paris for those insights into your art. And to our audience, thank you for joining us today. And please look out for the next museum series event at the French Cultural Services in mid-May, exploring the Duchamp collection at the Hirshhorn. And please do visit the MEI website to make your appointment to our series exhibit to see Narab and Badi's work in person.